Hello, welcome to Ethereum Mechanics video number 15, or sorry, 16. Uh, my little friend Philip might be helping us out today, so don't mind him. Philip, please move off to the side. We're going to be discussing the antenna paradox. This is a short video, it's intended for uh, people who are interested in antennas. So, antenna engineers have a paradox on their hands. Uh, they rationalize the paradox. Their, their rationalization of the paradox creates a contradiction in the understanding of radio and light, or it looks like it does. By properly resolving the paradox, we learn properties of light that were uh, never considered. So consider that we have an antenna, transmitting antenna, a dipole antenna, and a receiving dipole antenna. The transmitter transmits x watts of energy at the receiver, and the receiver receives y watts of power. Okay, so if we have look down from the top, um, and we look at the transmitting antenna from the top, and there's a certain range that the receiving antenna is at, it doesn't matter where we move around as long as we stay the same distance from the dipole transmitting antenna, the receiver will always receive the same power. Okay, that, that's true of a dipole antenna. In fact, if we move the receiving antenna over a complete sphere, we can, in accounting for the losses in the receiver, we can account for all of the energy transmitted from the transmitting antenna. In fact, we can map the complete field of the dipole transmitting antenna and with some other techniques involved. Now let's add another tr uh, transmitter in phase to the original one, so that we get transmitter 1 and transmitter 2, and they're transmitting in phase to the receiving antenna. So how much power could we expect to receive at the receiving antenna? I mean, you would expect that if you've got double the antennas, you should see double the power. The answer is you get quadruple the power at the receiver. So you'd ask, well, gee, this sounds like over unity or something. I mean, how can doubling the transmit power quadruple the output power. Well here's how antenna engineers reconcile the problem. Um, what they have is they have a field pattern that looks something like this. You get a large um, lobe at the receiver and then you get a pattern that looks like this, depending how far apart the antennas are, and then you get a large, oh, these should be the same size, I'm sorry I'm not a great artist here. Depending, this is a rough approximation of what the antenna pattern would look like. Now if you add up all the energy going completely around, and you add up all of these nulls with all of these peaks, you'll end up with a total of twice the power, 2y. So that's how it's normally reconciled, but here's a, there's a problem with this. I've got a problem with this. It would mean that the energy transmitted in any one direction is dependent upon the energy transmitted in another. I mean, the only way we can 4y here, uh, you know, as a 4y per meter squared, is to get less than 4y per meter squared somewhere else so that the total 2y could be obtained. This means that light can't be linear. Light is not self-contained, which is one of our uh, things we uh, said must be true in video number 14. So, this cannot be the answer. At least it cannot be the solution all by itself. So what should we be looking for? The proper solution requires that whatever was emitted from both transmitters in the direction of the receiver is the only stuff that will ever affect the receiver, I mean, barring reflections and multipath and whatnot. So, if we remember video 14, we said that all force at distance effects, such as light, are comprised of energy in motion. So let's analogize each ray as a conveyor belt of 1 volt batteries that dump into a 1 ohm load. Let's call the, the receiver a 1 ohm, say it's got 1 ohm, for, just for the sake of analogy. Um, and these batteries are moving along at a conveyor belt and they arrive in parallel because they're in phase. Uh, well, for, before we look at the parallel, let's just look at one. So if we have 1 volt going into a 1 ohm load, that'll give us 1 watt. So therefore, if we have two batteries arriving in parallel from the two different antennas, well since voltages do not add in parallel, we still only have one watt of power into the load. 
Okay, so, but if we change it up such that when the batteries arrive they stack in series, well, that's when we can get 4 watts because what do we know? That we know that E squared over R, so 2 volts squared is equal to 4 over 1 ohm equal 4 watts. And so we have no violation of physics here. Okay, we've doubled the energy into the load. So doubling the energy gives us four times the power. But we have an ambiguity problem. Okay, if you remember uh, rules of acquisition number 17, ambiguities for mystics. I don't like ambiguities. That's why I do not like um, quantum mechanics and the techniques they use, uh, the Lagrangian, because and, and, the, and the quantum theory of statistical analysis is the cat dead or alive, it's unambiguous, you don't know. I don't like that. Maybe it's true, but I don't like it. I won't accept it. So, I mean, this is ambiguous, because how do you know the, the battery from the left antenna is being stacked on the battery from the right antenna, or is it the other way around? It's ambiguous. Therefore, this is not acceptable. So, if remember video 14, we stated that fields are an emission of kinetic energy. The circuit analog of kinetic energy is a current source. So current sources can arrive in parallel to give us the quadrupling of power that we desire. Because you got one amp into one ohm, that's one watt. Two amps into one ohm is four watts. Because the relationship is I squared R. So one times one is one. 2 squared times 1 is 4. So the quadrupling of RF power in any given direction is due to the doubling of energy into a load. The above occurs independently of what happens in all other directions. But the interesting thing is that the independent occurrences in each direction are such that the sum total power only doubles, uh, that it only doubles is an interesting phenomenon. I mean, what would happen if the impedance of free space were not uniform? I mean, would this keeping to uh, power out equal power in hold? That's an interesting question. Uh, I'm not going to make that part of uh, ethereal mechanics because that's going to be a discussion for another day. So what's next? We're skipping uh, episode number 17. Uh, 18 is going to be the introduction of new uh, induction and new magnetism. 19, we're going to discuss the luminiferous ether and the Michael Samorley. This is more of a history to show what came before. Uh, so when we talk about the ether in reciprocal thinking, you'll have a foundation for what we're striving for. Uh, and number 21, you do not want to miss. Number 21, we're going to use the cannonball, and we're going to show you that a lot of the stuff in quantum mechanics, Big Bang theory, string theory, and relativity is a load of nonsense because they've missed something of nature that's very, very, very important and they do not even consider it. So do not miss number 21. All hail the mighty cannonball and thank you for those who are donating.